only um, people taking uh, notice of what we're doing, and especially uh, the COVID-19 situation has, has, uh, has, has introduced a bunch of opportunities. We competed in the EU hackathon and did really well there. We were selected out of 2,100 projects. We were one of the projects that was selected. Only 117 odd went through. Um, and we've been competing in the Matchathon, or rather participating in the Matchathon ever since. So I'm going to run through real quickly what, a G, what we've built. Um, but first, you, you probably should understand what the desired properties of an alert system is. And this is defined by the National Academy of Science, Engineering and Medicine. So first one, only reach people at risk. Well, well that's obvious. And that tells us, it, you know, you don't want to be telling or alerting people that are not in the area of concern uh, or, or sending irrelevant alerts. Communicate, uh, communicate impact and recommend predictive actions. It must be clear, reflect changing needs. Well, you must be able to update the situation. Be respected and trusted. Well, here, this is the, one of the most important points and especially as we fight uh, fake news, the sending alert authority must be respected and trusted and, and, and then uh, suitable for all hazards, work well alongside government and allow collecting feedback. So we went, we realized um, even before we read this that we had built or were building something exactly as defined by the Academy. Um, we built what we call a community alert platform. It's all web based. Um, there's a mobile app and iOS and Android. People download the app anonymously. This was one key component that we wanted from the very beginning, that people did not have to register or sign up, which is a key differentiator between all alert systems currently, especially in the US where uh, predominantly SMS is sent out and you have to sign up, opt in. We came up with a couple of key uh, ways of doing this. First of all, we said, look, you can send a first to know alert to a first to know group. This is the group that should be the first to know if something happens. Um, and you can set up these first to know groups anywhere. They are location based, so they are relevant by way of location. This is a, the simple process to join the first to know group. Um, here's an example of an alert. I'll run through this quickly because I'll get to the point of the, uh, the video where you'll see this, the, the solution in action. Um, one of another key aspect is being able to send a single alert in multiple languages. Any amount of languages can be inserted and people can toggle um, the, the language icon and choose their pre preferred language. So we've developed a number of use cases. In this particular case, we're actually showing a use case for public housing authorities, where you have a defined ecosystem of people uh, who, who are looking for information that, that need uh, trusted advice. And, and so we've come up with this particular use case. There are a number of other use cases. We're working with cities, with municipalities. We're even working with uh, places in the Caribbean, Caribbean islands like the Turks and Caicos, um, where we're working with their emergency management folks. So really the core component of this thing is, is being able to send out localized alerts, um, counter misinformation. The solution works all over the world. It's the same all over the world. It's like Facebook or Twitter. Um, someone downloading the app in Sydney, Australia, where I am at the moment, and coming over to, uh, you know, anywhere in the US or Africa, if there's a, an alert authority using the system, um, you can get an alert just the same and all anon anonymously. So that's just the costing that we've come up with for the um, uh, Albany Housing Authority, which is essentially free. And uh, we want them to be able to send out unlimited alerts and updates. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a second um, and then I need to load up the video and I'm conscious of the fact that the sound um, is, uh, is going to let me down. Uh, so here we are, share computer sound. And uh, if I share, and then load up my video. If I can get uh, if I see if the <laughs> yeah.
We have seen the power of misinformation put to political use, and now we see misinformation infecting communities and instilling fear, confusion, and it's clear we need an alternative. My team and I would like to introduce the Yuga Round Community Alert solution. Yuga Round alerts delivered to the mobile app will be location based and therefore hyper relevant to anonymous receivers. We offer our solution as a counterweight to legacy methods and social media. Let's look at a use case. We've set up the command for the Albany Housing Authority. We've created a first to know group called the Albany Housing Authority first to know group. It's right there in the location of the authority. We can set up any amount of groups. To join a group, simply download the app, go to My Groups. The groups in your area will load up, or you zoom out to find the group, and simply tap Yes to join. I've joined already, so I can unjoin. I can do all this anonymously. I never need to sign up. Now let's send an alert. Here we are sending a COVID-19 advice alert to the Albany Housing Authority First to Know group. Here are the CAP headers, urgency, severity, status. I can select from a number of choices for each. A hyperlink for Georgia testing sites. This is a notification type alert, health information. And you'll notice the detail here of the alert. We can even insert additional languages. We can insert any amount of languages. We can upload a nice image or infographic. And then we can set the alert to expire in one or seven days. That means anyone joining the group in that time will get the alert. And here's the location on the map. This is the alert detail. It shows you the date sent and the expiry date. The alert will automatically ex expire on the 25th of May. And you can see how many were sent and how many were opened. In order to get the alert, you can go to Google Play or the App Store and type you go round. Simply install the app and please notice you won't ever have to sign up or register. You are totally anonymous. Once there, Go to My Groups, zoom out, or swipe the map and go to Albany, tap the pin, tap Yes to join, and you will get the alert. Folks, did you hear all that? Okay. Um... I think we've got five minutes. Uh, you're welcome to uh, go ahead and download um, the app, as I've suggested, and, and go over to Albany. It's in, it's in uh, Georgia, uh, south, I think, of Atlanta. You just have to kind of zoom out wherever you are and look for that Albany Housing Group, and you will get the live alert. We've got just over five minutes for questions, actually about six minutes for questions. I hope you don't mind if I go first, Gavin. How will this help people in, in Georgia, particularly in the public housing authorities? What problem does it solve for them? And um, how particularly is it different from existing solutions? So what we've said is um, you need an alternative, or rather you need to augment current channels of information. Right now, um, folks are getting information uh, from a myriad of different sources, social media, um, SMS, emails, um, people are posting stuff to website. There is not anything that is going directly to the mobile device, an uh, advice, a smart information, which is contextual to, to the situation or place. All our alerts come with the place uh, located on the map so you can see con context. Um, and then uh, the alert can be updated any amount of time. So an end-to-end -end situation can be managed. For example, let's say a person goes missing in the vicinity of the housing project. Um, the directors, administrators can send an alert to the group and say that someone's gone missing. 
if the person is found, they can send an update to the alert and say the person's been found, which is something that doesn't happen with, say, for example, Amber Alerts. No one ever tells you that uh, the person's been found in or, or what the situation is. You know what I really like about this, and particularly right now in terms of a use case, is that you have multiple states that are trying to reopen and trying to kind of, you know, uh, bring things back to normal. And, you know, there, there are plenty of places we're already seeing where people are congregating and ignoring social distancing and things like that. I would hope that there are the responsible, uh, either business owners that have these places of gathering or beaches or whatever, that would then, would, would, would require them to download this app before going in. And again, not having to be registered is a great, you know, sell. Like, we're not, we don't want your information, just download this app. And if, for example, things get too out of hand, a message could be sent to everyone immediately going, okay, you all need to, you know, back off and we're now policing or, you know, something like that. Um, like, uh, it, it, it seems like a, like one of those things that we're like, we need now. <laughs> so, so I really, I really like the way that you've done this. I mean, I think the, 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 the heavy lift is getting people to download an app. That's a, that's a hard thing to do, but in controlled kind of environments where you have a gatekeeper, you could possibly just tell them, okay, well, the price of admission is download the app. It doesn't cost you anything. And we don't, you don't share anything with us and then go on ahead and we'll warn you if something's, something's off. Okay, a question for you. Um, one, your presentation is great. The thinking that you've done is just remarkable and it's super impressive. Um, how does this compare to Nixel, which is in broad use in Georgia? That's the first question. So Nixel was uh, an app that was purchased by Everbridge, um, if I remember correctly. Um, and essentially they layered it into their system. It's, it's essentially allowing, uh, it's, it's augmenting their current methodology, which is to send an SMS. So if you go to the Nixel app, and uh, this is, I haven't done it for a while, we did it, you have to sign up, you have to create an account. And that's what we wanted to eliminate. You've got to create an account and password. And the other thing is that if you download the Nixel app for Georgia and then go to Florida or go to, uh, you know, New York or something, the app doesn't work there. You've got to sign up to their system. So the reality is that it, it's not universal. You've got to sign up to multiple places. And we said, why? What's the need? You know, you can go anywhere in America. I can come to America and, and join a local group and with, just with a tap and now get alerts. So, so yeah, so there's a huge advantage in that. Great. And then the second question is, um, given the type of information that would be sent through this app, there's probably a large number of people who would be quite skeptical of the information that would be disseminated. How will you get their buy-in? So if you go to the app and, and download it, you'll notice something interesting. Every alert comes with who sent the alert. Not only that, the sent by is hyperlinked back to the person or, or agency that is sending the alert. So the idea is that you learn to trust. And, for, and the other thing is that we cannot sell our system or allow our system to, to be used by anyone. It's not like social media. It can only be used by authoritative alert originators. And they are quite responsible, highly trained folks. For example, um, the management of the Albany Housing Authority going up to the city, the, there's always an emergency, and going up to the county, going up to the state, they are very responsible people, and those are the folks that we're working with. I have a question. Um, in your research, sorry, um, maybe I missed this, but like, what, are, what do you do? So a lot of the vulnerable population that consumes fake news, at least where I am in New York City, are elderly at risk people. And they don't have access to cell phones. So they have actual landlines still. Yeah, so at the end of the day, um, this is a, a, a solution for a smartphone. Um, it, it, you need a smartphone. And we've found that there's always people around those elderly people who do have smartphones. So remember something, when you send an alert uh, out to the community, if, even if one in five or one in 10 get the alert, you would hope that those people would, you know, advise those elderly people or people in their family or colleagues or friends and, hey, did you get this alert? It seems like, seems like the building's on fire. It doesn't need everybody to get the alert. As long as the information goes out, 
that it's available, that it, it's accessible, that's important. Well, Gavin, thank you so much for that amazing demonstration. Um, one of the things that, that we worked to do over the course of this hackathon is we actually made some introductions to the housing authorities in Georgia, and now this is being implemented in that particular housing authority. Um, <clears throat> so it should affect thousands of people um, from, from qualified uh, authoritative sources. So well done to Gavin, and you go around.